What's up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about the top 6 underrated heroes of this current patch. Now the reason why I wanted to do this is I felt like over the last month or so, month and a half of this patch being out, I made a couple videos, maybe 3 or 4 on the heroes that I thought were extremely good, and, and kind of blatantly good, right? Like, heroes that are sort of just, oh, you know, the pros have like 60% win rate on them, and they're just better than the others because of the patch, but what are heroes that got buff and doing well in pubs, but are overlooked. What are these heroes? Who are the overlooked heroes that you can surprise your opponents with? For a while, I had this discussion with one of my friends where a hero like Death Prophet that has been out of the meta for a while, not necessarily recently, this this was a discussion almost a year ago, but at that time, Death Prophet was completely out of the meta. And we were discussing how we think this hero has particular potential strictly because people don't know exactly what it does. They don't know how much damage it does. They don't know what its tempo is, its item builds, its survivability. Now, as a result, let's say Ember has been in the meta for three months, you're at least going to know what picks are good against it, right? You're going to know how to counterpick it, you're going to know exactly what to do in the mid-game to try to pick it off, right? You're going to have a, a game plan to actually counter it. But if you bring in a hero like Death Prophet, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I don't know what this hero does, and as a result, we're going to struggle. And so that's what I'm here to do today, 600 rated heroes, and let's get into it. But also, before we start the video, if you're interested in these heroes and you're excited to hear them, like the video, helps me out, you know. Your boy Speed, we're just trying to make some Dota content and get better at Dota, that's the goal. Now let's get into it. Also over on the main Game Leap website, I plan to do some more content in terms of pro replays. Usually I focus more on doing the pro replays for YouTube, but I want to do a few for the main website as well. In addition, I'm doing Random 6K, if you don't know what that is. Random 6K is where I basically play pubs and I analyze my own games, so you can get in the head of, you know, me a pro player, because typically what I'm doing is pro replay analysis. I have to, and not completely guess, but somewhat guess, on what they're thinking and what their opinions are, but when I'm doing my own replay analysis, I can give you exactly what I'm thinking and show you exactly how I win my games and how you can do it too. So the first hero I want to talk about is Lycan. Now, this is one I actually thought would be very good right off the bat, mainly for the reason that I thought this Howl change was a buff. So currently what Howl does is it makes your wolves and your main hero emit a pulse in an area, and what that pulse does is reduce armor, and I'm like, oh, Lycan with armor reduction is quite strong. In addition, what I figured out with one of my friends, a Lycan spammer, is that Drums is extremely good on the hero as a replacement to the old Howl that gave attack speed. And as a result, what you could do is you could buy a Helm Dom, which gave attack speed, you could buy Necro 3, and then you could even go into a Drums. Or you could simply go Helm Dom Drums, or Helm Dom Necro 1 Drums. And you had all these options to really dictate the tempo, kind of decide what sort of game you want to play, what was going to fit best, and as a result, I had a lot of confidence in Lycan. But really, I haven't seen too much of the hero, especially in the pro scene, I haven't seen much of it at all, and in lower and lower pubs, I definitely don't see a lot of this hero. So, what's up? Because on Dota 2 Pro Tracker, which tracks, you know, the, the overall win rate in games on a lot of the heroes, Lycan is the second highest on the list, right, behind Visage, who only has 30 games, but Lycan has 146 games and a 58% win rate, which is quite significant, right? So why isn't this hero being picked more? Well, frankly, I think it should, and that's why it's in this video, because I think Howl, in combination with this, this Helm Dom drums build, is very, very strong. And as a result, I think this is one of the best pub heroes in Dota, as a safe laner, but also an off laner. Because you have to think about this, right? I think Lycan as an off laner is crazy good, if you understand the playstyle. What do I mean by that? Well, you have to know how to drag waves. Right? What do I mean by that? Well, you can use the wolves so that you do not have to actually straight up 1v1 the lane or even 1v2 when Lycan is weak in the early levels. But instead, what you do is you ask your position 4 to let you solo lane, or you simply just drag anyway. You send your wolves in between the tier 1 and the tier 2, you drag them to you, and all of a sudden you're going to get XP. And once Lycan hits 5 and gets his ability cripple on his wolves, which reduces attack speed by 60%, you become one of the strongest heroes in the game, and especially at level 6 in combination with their Helm Dom timing, you can run anyone over. All you have to do to succeed on this hero is when you have your ultimate, you can look for a pickoff. When you do not, snowball through camps, snowball through waves, get those jungle items, push in waves, which will then naturally make you take towers, and all of a sudden you're on a good path. Next up on the list is Ricky, and I know this is a bit controversial because I was even recently watching a Dota Cinema video. I believe it was the A to Z challenge where they were playing Abaddon and uh, I think Alk, if I'm not mistaken, and they even had a brief discussion about Ricky, and I believe Sinarin said that you thought Ricky was one of the worst heroes in Dota. And I can understand why he's saying this. I think he's particularly coming from the perspective of a high MMR player, as he is a very high MMR player, he used to be a pro. But for me, when I'm looking at these heroes, I'm also trying to think about what would work in the average player's pub, right? Because you kind of want to stomp pubs, right? That's why a lot of us are here. It's not to win a tournament. It's not to win a major or a minor. It's just to take out your, you know, your fellow brethren in, in a pub. And for that, I think Ricky is unbelievably good. Reasons being that he is so hard to catch right now. He is so hard to catch. 
Smoke Screen gives you Disengage, Bling Strike gives you Disengage, two charges by the way, and Tricks of the Trade gives you Mobility and Disengage as well, right? I mean, I could even just mention the fact that, you know, your ultimate is Invisibility, right? So, like, Reiki is just so good in pubs for that reason. In addition, people's last sets are very, very bad in low-memory games, right? It's just bad. There's no denying that. If you go below 3k, the CS is just... Frankly, if you're trying to go up an MMR, you just should pick a Flash Farmer and improve your CS every single game. Regardless, if you just want to be fighting more so, Ricky is super good because he's great at kiting in and out of fights, picking on supports, which is crucial in pubs, right? Just pick Ricky and go on the supports, go solo kill anyone in the side lanes that have not bought any stats and therefore have 800 HP 20 minutes into the game, and all of a sudden the fight is easy because you have an impact kill, right? You can look at team fighting in Dota in two ways, like, oh, I did the most damage and as a result I was the most impactful hero, or I killed the most heroes quickly and I had impactful kills, and Ricky, in my opinion, is very good at impactful kills, and that is super strong in Lomar pubs when people are trash at saving each other with glimmers, four staffs, BKBs, mantas, it doesn't matter, all these items. And therefore, get your wraith bands, get a defusal blade, and go kill people. Next up on the list is Dark Willow, and I was recently just watching an EG highlight clip. Yes, believe it or not, guys, I do watch a lot of Dota videos. Shocking, right? Shocking. <laughs> but uh, Crit was playing him in one of the EG highlight reels, and he was just popping off. And it kind of reminded me of, of my idea recently on this hero, where I'm like, Dark Willow is quite good. Quite good. This hero's numbers have been good for a while. Pretty sure it's gotten buffed at least three times. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Bramble Maze got buffed, making it better at level 1 in many different regards. I believe in cooldown and damage. Its ultimate got buffed, making its bedlam better. And it's still just old Dark Willow. Like, this hero has unbelievably good base attack time. You're one of the hardest supports in the game to kill because you have multiple forms of disengage, especially your W. And most importantly, you have three forms of disable. Three forms of disable. I just feel like this hero's potential in team fights. if you're one of those players who likes to be flashy and make things happen and be that guy who just makes all the cool plays, that is Dark Willow. If you want to be a position 4 player that pops off, right, you pick Dark Willow. This hero pops off. The main thing you want to make sure that you do is pair it with some hero with a stun in lane if possible, or does the hero with like a slow, such as Abaddon, Sand King is great with a stun, it's great with a hero like Wraith King when that was popular in, I believe, TI... 8, if I'm not mistaken? Maybe that was TI7. I believe it was TI8, right? Dark Willow in general, one of the best laners in Dota if you can land your Bramble Maze, and then you can literally, it once you get a Yules, which I highly suggest you rush, you can even go Brown Boots Yules, I've seen people do this. When you get that, you just put your E on them, which is your stun, they fly up, that starts ticking, they come down, you Bramble Maze them, you click your W, you click your ulti, and all of a sudden they're just ticking out. And it's so good for pubs, it is so so good. Also, farm waves with this hero. I know it has no wave shove, but you need a lot of levels in farm, so please kill creep waves. If you don't know how to do this, what you should do once the game passes minute 8 to minute 10, look for the mid lane because the mid laner will be often ganking, especially if it is a relatively average to low MMR pub. The mid laner will often gank, and therefore you can go mid, get a lot of farm, get a lot of levels, and hit your level 12 spike on Dark Willow. Next up on the list is Lich. Now, I think Lich is good in particular because of his strong laning and ability to dominate early game teamfights. Right, Lich's hero has Frost Blast, and if you don't know what Frost Blast does, what it does is it's an 150 damage nuke at level 1 and an unbelievably low cooldown. And what this means is that you can spam it. And you might be like, well, speed, am I gonna run out of mana? How can I just spam this spell if it's pretty high in mana spell on a low cooldown? Well, my friend, I have the solution for you. The thing about this patch is that, you know, you don't have to buy starting items. You don't have to buy wards or courier, which completely frees you up. And as a result, it's like, okay, now I have this extra gajillion gold right? You don't even need to buy Sentry necessarily. You have all this gold. You can have three mangoes, a clarity, two set of tangos, maybe even another clarity, maybe even another clarity, and maybe a fourth clarity. Because frankly, all you need is mana. You right-click, nuke, right-click, back up. Right-click, nuke, right-click, back up. Like, guys, that is it. If the opponent is up in your wave and making a bad play and overextending, punish them with your Q and you will win the lane. Then at level 2, if you have any sort of kill lane, whether or not it's Troll Warlord to Ursa to Juggernaut to even Spectre, you put your Frost Shield on them, you Frost Blast, and it is basically a free kill in the laning stage. I am not kidding, Lich is so good in lane. And not to mention that he's one of the best early game teamfighters as well. Your ultimate is the highest damage spell in the early game. And now, yes, uh, you can go in the comments and tell me speed, but technically, if you use Rock of Brush on its low cooldown in a minute, it's a higher damage. I don't care, I don't care, okay? The Lich's ultimate bounces around, it's like 300 damage a bounce, it kills everybody, right? So all you need to do is be patient, be patient, cast your spells, cast your first two nukes, and then when people group together, you chuck your thing at them. 
How hard can that be? It's literally an insta one team fight. In addition, stop building Axe, I hate you. If you build Axe on the Lich, you're an absolute madman. You are wasting space on this earth. I'm kidding. Relax, guys. Don't go Twitch up me or whatever. You know, you're not actually a waste of space. I'm just trying to say that buy a magic wand, buy some bracers, take your like 200 health or whatever talent, have like 1600 HP, suck people in, and then buy a four staff and a glimmer cape or just buy those earlier. And it's easy cash. Next up on the list, we have Huskar. And uh, yet, no, this hero, I think it's just really good right now. I'm on Dota 2 Pro Tracker which I love just looking at. It has 306 picks and a 55% win rate, which is relatively significant. And uh, therefore, I think it's a pretty good hero. I think it's fairly strong in the lane right now. I actually don't know why I'm saying that. I think it's very strong in the lane right now. And let me give you a quick breakdown on how you should play Huskar if you're convinced to play him after this video. What you want to do is do not trade that hard at level one. This is the bane of Huskar players. If you're playing against Huskar, think about this as well. This will help you a lot in the future if you're against or just Huskar. Your hero stinks at level 1. Huskar is abysmal at level 1. I don't know why people run away from Huskar at level 1. It's the same thing as running away from a Monkey King at level 1. I know they're a lane dominator, but they are a lane dominator when they get levels. Levels. Do not trade as Huskar at level 1. Or if you're against the Huskar, trade with Huskar at level 1. The hero's armor is low. Its attack range is low. It spell literally makes it deal damage to itself and does like 40 damage total. It's a 40 damage nuke that makes him take damage and overextend and decrease because it's a low attack range hero. Huskar is bad at level 1. Wait till at least level 2, optimally level 3, and then you can pop off in your lane. That's all I'm going to say. I think that's all you need to do to snowball on Huskar. Actually, one more thing because <laughs> I just realized this from watching a video of Huskar recently. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not run around and fight for 15 minutes straight on Huskar once you've come out of the landing stage. Kill some jungle camps, get a jungle item, you'll become much tankier or just have much more damage depending on what item you get. And this is significant because Huskar is one of the fastest farmers in Dota. So stop running around, kill some camps, win your lane, and then kill your camps. Focus on taking the mid tower as well as amping your farm in jungle camps and you'll do significantly better than the Huskars who just run around and gank the whole game. And finally, the last hero on this list is Naga Siren. Now, I don't want to put too much thought into Naga because I don't think there is too much thought that would be put into Naga. All that you need to know is that this hero is not necessarily that underrated. It's being actually relatively picked a lot on the pro scene. The thing is, I think it's just one of the best pub heroes in Dota if you spam it. Play a ton of Naga games and you'll become very confident on her farming patterns, her ability to 2-2 split with her illusions, which means you send your main hero and illusion to one camp, and there are two other illusions to the next camp. And when that happens, you kill two camps at a time where most heroes can only kill one. And it's really, really simple other than that, right? Let's say you want to take a lane. Instead of threatening yourself like most players would have to do if you're playing a hero like Juggernaut or Sven, what you can do on Naga is simply send illusions. This will keep you alive, which means you'll snowball more. In addition, once you get your Manta Diffusal and maybe even a heart, you become the strongest hero in Dota, arguably, right? Please, in the comments, don't tell me, well, if you're against Sand King, Leshrac, and Enigma, there's a low chance you're going to be able to use your illusions in the fight. Okay, thank you. <laughs> nah, but all, all jokes aside, guys. I do think Naga is very good. I think a lot of these farming heroes are very good. I think Naga in particular is extremely good because she has a very basic landing state. High HP regen, high armor, essentially means that you're unbelievably tanky, hard to deal with in the lane. All you have to do is buy early stats, buy two Wraith Bands, get those treads, and then once you have that, even if you only have two Wraith Bands, if you hit level five, even if you're level four and the lane gets hard, just leave. Just leave. Leave, leave the lane. Leave the lane. It is not faster to sit in lane and get pressured out. I hate that players do this on any hero. I really hate it. Um, if they're liking Sven, PL, Naga, even Drow, Jug, like if your lane is unplayable or very difficult and you're standing still and get just getting contested under a tower, leave. Let your support get the XP. They'll get solo XP. You'll get solo XP in the jungle and you'll have two heroes getting solo XP. It is a very good strategy, but thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't like and subscribe to help our channel grow. You know, it helps us as always. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount guys 25% and start your journey today